and why? Because not all of us are willing to go to the process. Not all of us are willing to go through the birthing process. Not all of us. A lot of churches, they stay in this stage and, and they go year by year and just stay here. And God is saying to go to the next level, you need to understand that you may be in the seventh month or the eighth month and it's going to get uncomfortable for you. Now I'm aligning you so that for the next month you will be able to give birth. And you need to understand that the laboring process is a difficult one. But if you are called, don't only be called, but be chosen. Be the ones that say yes to the Lord whatever I need to fix let me fix it whatever I need to do let me do it if I need to jump I will jump it out if I need to pray it out I will pray it out if I need to sing it out I will sing it out but I'm gonna get to do what you want me to do it is your way not my way oh Lord shut up and you have to understand that he says, if my people who are called by my name. See, it, it ain't the pastor's name or the apostle's name. <laughs> God is saying, basic fundamental intercession. You have to recognize who you are in the kingdom. If you're my people and you're called by my name. In other words, in your life there's a marker of Jehovah God. You have his fingerprints on you. You have been marked by him. You are in his palm of his hands. He has been marked in your life with a special anointing to do special things. And God is saying, I need you to understand who you are in me first. You're just not anybody. You're his people. And his people need to move when he says to move. His people need to understand when he says talk, you have to talk. But you need to understand who you are. If he says walk, you need to walk. Because we are his body. We are a representation of him in earth. It says what it is in the heavens, let it be on the earth. This is the way that he wants us to represent him. You have to do what he tells you to do. You have to walk the way he tells you to walk. You have to talk whatever he wants you to talk. That is being his people marked by his name it ain't for your glory it ain't for your benefit it ain't for your ministry it's because he's telling you to do it maybe no one is gonna back you up no one is gonna believe in you but it doesn't matter because you are called by his name it's so interesting with this because it's such a uh, a verse that is so well known but yet we forget that God is saying, go back to the basics. I love, I love Dr. Wanda Tommy's message yesterday because she's talking about first love. We need to go back to that. Amen. <laughs> and this is just a continuation of what she just started yesterday. Because you were called by his name and you, and, and, and you are his people. And the next thing is number three is humbleness. So the mark of you being his people is that you're humble. How do we know who you are? Because you're humbled. And Jesus said, I am meek and I am humble. Be just like me. Follow me because this is who I am. Humbleness doesn't mean what you're wearing. Humbleness is not a representation of what you're wearing on the outside. Humbleness is a condition of the heart. It doesn't matter. I've seen poor people being very prideful. Because it doesn't matter what you're wearing on the outside. And I was speaking in this last month about grace. And one of the marks of grace is humbleness also. So you're talking about the God that has given us grace in this time, in this season, when he came to bring his kingdom on the earth. He says, I am marked by meekness, by my humbleness, and I need my people to understand that they have to walk the same way that I am walking. So not only are you my people, not only do you have my mark, but the third thing that people need to see in you is humbleness. Hallelujah. We cannot let pride get into our hearts and let us get all 
all driven by our personal desires of what we want. This is what I think God wants. This is what I know. This is what I've been taught. No, God is saying those who are humble will understand and destroy and discern the seasons of times and if you understand what God is doing in this weekend you will understand it's a time for prayer, it's a time of intercession, it's a time to get ready to get birth to the supernatural move of God in the area of Kissimmee, Point Siena Orlando, Lakeland I call it upon this region, God is going to transform lives using you, using your neighbor look at your neighbor and say he wants to use you but for that he says you need to humble yourself you know what it is that we think we're in ministry too long and we don't need to be taught new things sometimes our ignorance get in the way and whatever you're ignorant, the enemy takes advantage. So God says, my people perish for lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. They don't know what's going on. So God is lifting up a people that is humble. What is humbleness? That means that you walk with your face down towards his glory all the time. You don't think you know it all. You don't think you have it all together. You know that if it hadn't been for the goodness of the Lord, where would you be? You know that you got a long way, baby, to get there. You know that your weak areas and you know your strong areas and you know where you're supposed to stand up and, and, and you know you have confessed yourself and said, you know what, I need help. Oh, everybody has issues. The, the problem is that it ain't, not everybody admits their issues, but God is saying for you to be humble, you need to admit your issues. I, I got some mess going on. I might like pretty in the outside, but on the inside, I got some mess that I need the Holy Spirit to align because if you don't align your mess God can't take you to new levels and new dimensions so here he comes and says humbleness is a characteristic that you can't just say you have you have to act it out you have to walk in it every day you need to remember who you are for what you need and what you lack and you have to understand that for you to have true intercession you have to be with your feet on the ground put your head in the heavens to so not to forget that you are divinely appointed but not to forget that you're also human so you can be able to relate to people and to important people what God is revealing to you in the heavens. And God is saying, for that you have, you have to live with your face on the floor. And you need to humble yourself and say, you know what? I need God. See, I, I feel in my spirit what God is trying to do with this church. We've been too long looking at the television and trying to follow big ministries and trying to follow their patterns and, and how they got there and how this and how that. And you have forgotten the basics of life. That is just prayer and intercession and fasting. You have to understand that God is not here just to look out for big ministries and, and mega even though he wants us to be a mega something mega part of his kingdom god is looking for people just like you ordinary and simple but greatness in you that god is equipping so that god can receive all the glory it's time for you and me to get a line so we can tell the government what god is doing next so we can tell the city what god is doing there so we can tell the is what God is doing that but for that you need to live in the ground face down and say you know what it is for your glory whatever you reveal to me it's for your glory so the first part of intercession is to be humbled we need to understand that pride like 
the apostle Melvin was speaking earlier just creeps up on us we don't even intend to be prideful it just creeps up it just you know God has spoken us to so much about being a prophet that we just think we can be a prophet without him And that the people, it does like happen to David and Saul. David, wow! And the same people rose up his ego. Because people will do that to you. One day they will applaud you, the next day they go stab you in the back. But if we're not careful and we live with humbleness, we'll let people dictate our destiny. And we'll let people tell us what is our next step because they keep applauding on the things that we do. You do it better than them. And you do it. You sing better. You preach better. Oh, I like you better. I'll go with you. Hallelujah. I'll follow you because you, you're just better than Saul. Hallelujah. And, 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 and we start here boosting up people's egos because we want to have some personal gain. We want to have some allies. Hallelujah. But God is saying, if you walk in Humbleness, you're gonna know that even though they applaud you one day, they might stab you the next day, and I am the only one that's gonna be with you night and day. It doesn't matter what you go through, Lord, Lord, God the Father is going to be with you. So, humbleness is so necessary not only in ministry but in leadership. And as any intercessor and then i love this this version the amplified bible because it not only says it's humbleness but it says you need to pray you need to seek you need to crave and you need to require of necessity of my face it goes deeper than just a 10 second prayer We get a 10 second prayer because we're used to microwavable stuff. Society has taught us if we need to get to the top, we'll stab whoever it is on the, along the way. I'll sleep with the boss and I'll get there faster than you. Microwavable stuff. Hmm? So, society, media has penetrated in our churches. And we think that God is a microwavable God. And if he doesn't do what he wants us to do at that precise moment, we'll leave this church and go to the second church. Because maybe that ain't true prophets up in there. No, no, no. You just haven't gone through the process. <laughs> oh, if that would have been a true prophecy, that would have been for yeah, you. You just, you thought it was a 10 day formula, baby. You thought it was a 10 minute thing. You thought, ah, ah, to do it your way no 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 i'm trying to break the pride in you i'm trying to break the ego in you i'm trying to let you know that i am god up in here not you you're not the one telling me what to do i know when to help you get birth but i know when you need to just sit it out you need to walk it out you need to hallelujah get in the process get in the position to get birth you need to do your part if you want me to do something for you this ain't your way baby it ain't burger king hallelujah this is god's way have it your way church ain't no buffet whatever foods you want if not, I'm going to go somewhere else. I said, no, you need to pray. You need to seek. Not only you need to pray, you seek. You need to crave it in you. In other words, you need to fill it in your gut. You need it to fill it in your spiritual womb. You need to understand that your spiritual womb needs to desire it. I don't know if you understand that today God is giving a desire for prayer. God is giving a desire for intercession. God is saying, if you seek me, if you crave me, if you touch me, if if you seek my face if you need me you will find me we're so so busy with ministry we're so busy with programs 
I told you I'm preaching to myself. You don't got to believe me. I'm just, this is for me. You're too busy with things. God said, I need some Hannah's in here. Because Hannah needed a baby, but 